What's up YouTube? Have you wondered how to use the pen tool in Affinity Designer on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen, I'm a media design educator, and today we are talking all about the pen tool in Affinity Designer on the iPad. All of the tool videos in this series are coming from my new course, Intro to Affinity Designer on the iPad, Making Your First Logo. So if you're interested in watching that entire course, make sure that you check out the links in the description to this video to take that course either on Skillshare or on Gumroad. All right, we're going to jump in and learn all about the pen tool in Affinity Designer on the iPad. This is a tool that intimidates a lot of people, so we're going to try and take it a little bit slow so that you can really figure out what's going on here and learn the basics of it. There's a lot of nuances to the pen tool, but in this video, I hope that you will learn the basics so that you're able to get started practicing with it because you'll really start to see improvement as you do more practice with it. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. All right, now that we've learned all about shapes and how they work and merging shapes and fills and strokes, it's time to move on to what might be the most difficult tool that is found in Affinity Designer and Mini Vector programs, and that is the pen tool. So the pen tool is going to be the fifth tool down on the toolbar, and it looks like a fountain pen. So go ahead and select that. Now, I understand that it can be quite intimidating and difficult to learn the pen tool, especially if you are new to working with vectors. The good news is that you do not have to use the pen tool to create create logos if you don't want to. You can do everything with just component shapes and shape merging techniques that we've already talked about. But I want you to have at least been exposed to the pen tool because you might want to use it sometime. And just knowing how the pen tool works will help you to understand vectors better. But it's perfectly fine if you find the pen tool frustrating at first and you don't want to use it. That is a normal reaction for people who are just being introduced to vector art. I'm not going to go into everything that there is to know about the pen tool because I really that it can be overwhelming but here are a few things that you really do need to know and then we'll go in and we'll use these dots as an example the first thing to know and this is related to these dots is that the pen tool does not work at all like a pen in the real world you do not ever drag to make a line with the pen tool so with the pen tool selected I'm just going to show you what I mean a lot of people when they first encounter the pen tool will try and just draw so I'm just putting my pencil down and I'm just trying to draw and you can see that it is not drawing what I want to draw. It's doing something crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that and I will explain to you how this works. You don't click and drag. That's actually what this next tool, the pencil tool does. And I don't recommend that you use the pencil tool for logo design because it's not very helpful. Instead of you just tapping and dragging to make lines with the pen tool like you would think based on how you use a pen in the real world, this is much more like doing a dot to dot because what you're actually doing with the pen tool is you're laying down anchor points and then you let Affinity Designer know where you want it to draw and then it will draw the lines to get there. So just think about this like doing a dot to dot. So I'm going to show you how this works here just with these first set of five squares. So the points that you lay down look like little squares. So let me zoom in here. I'm going to tap on the first one to lay down a point. And I'm going to tap on the second one to lay down another point. And you can see that I did not drag across the screen. I just tapped and it drew a line in between my squares. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tap again. And then there. And then there. And now I have a little house shape. If I want to close that off, I will just tap on my original point, which is the little white square there. And now I have a closed off shape that I can add a fill to. I can adjust the stroke on. I can do any of that stuff. And that is a finished shape. Now, what you might have seen before, when I dragged, something weird happened when I first tried to do it. So we're going to talk about that now. There are basically two types of nodes or dots that you are letting Affinity Designer draw between. These are called nodes, and they're either what are called straight nodes or curved nodes. Straight nodes look like squares, like we have here on our little house, and curved nodes look like circles. So if you just tap and to put down a point, and then tap again, you're going to draw a straight line. It's going to be a straight node. Now, if I hit my X down here, if you go ahead and get out of that line, and I start drawing a new one, if I tap and then I tap and drag, I'm going to get a curved node. And you can see that that has become a curve. Now curves have these handles on them that look like these blue lines going out to circles. Those are the way that you direct a fiend designer in how much curve you want there to be in your line. If you ever want to adjust your points while you're using the pen tool, just hold down command on the keyboard, or of course you can also use it here on the wheel, and then you can adjust these handles. Think of the handles like magnets that pull the line towards them. If you want those handles to remain the same size, Go ahead and set command so that you can use the tool and then go ahead and hold down control so that those will stay the same amount and in alignment with each other. 
Okay, now that might not be making a lot of sense right now. I totally understand that. I'm going to go ahead and hit the X to get out of this line. And we're going to go up to this set of dots here so that we can see this better. I'm just going to lay down a straight one first just by putting it right there. And then I'm going to go up to the circle, tap, and hold out. Now if I want to keep this in a line, I'm just going to hold down Shift. So let's go ahead and hold down Shift. We're going to keep that right like that. Now you can see those handles are acting like magnets that are pulling out the line and the one coming out the right side is going to act like a magnet on the next one. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to tap in the square and you can see that it just comes down so I have a curve coming in and then I have a straight one at the end. Now I'm going to go down to the circle and do the same thing again. Click and drag without letting go. Go ahead and I'm going to hold down shift to keep it in a straight line and then I'm going to let go of shift just tap in my square. And now I have this nice little curve here that I've drawn by using both straight and curved notes. And remember that while you're drawing, you can always hold down command or you can just put two fingers on the screen to be able to adjust it. So if I don't like this node where it is exactly, I can move it a little bit. Holding down two fingers, I can adjust that. You can adjust points or handles that way and still be able to continue drawing. To get out of your drawing, you just hit the little X over in the left hand corner. Okay, now like I said, there's a lot more that can go into the pen tool and I'm not going to worry about most of it right now. The last thing that I want to mention to you is just this little selector up here in the menu bar. You have pen, which is normal, smart, which I don't want you to worry about right now, polygon, which will only allow you to draw straight lines. With the polygon selected, you can't draw curves at all. And then line, which is probably the most important one. This one allows you to just draw a line. You're only going to lay down two points and then you'll just continue to draw lines from there. So you might need a line in your logo and that's the easiest way to get it because there isn't a separate line tool in Affinity Designer. There's just the line option under the pen tool. Okay, really the great secret to the pen tool is practice. The best thing you can do is practice with it if you really want to gain mastery of it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning more about the pen tool in Affinity Designer on the iPad. Like I said, this is a complicated tool that a lot of people struggle with at first. So don't worry if you're feeling a little bit frustrated with it. If you have questions, go ahead and ask those in the comments below. And don't forget, you can check out this full course, Intro to Affinity Designer version two on the iPad in the links in the description below on Skillshare and on Gumroad. If you choose to take it on Gumroad, which is a single purchase, then you can go ahead and use the code YT15 to get it for just $15. All right, that's it for today. We'll check in the comments and I will see you in the next video.